Welcome back uh, to the last 15 minutes uh, of uh, market trading. Uh, it looks like the market has had its uh, uh, run and fill of the day. And now it's uh, a little languid. Uh, the Nifty is around that 8710 mark, has done its run for the day. And the Bank Nifty as well settling closer to the 19,400 mark. It at one point threatened to get all the way to 19,300 as well. Uh, we're joined by Varun Goel uh, as well. And of course, we have got uh, our other experts uh, speaking with us. Uh, Varun, how are you approaching the market at this point in time? Do you fear uh, a fairly seminal breakdown? Another 500 points can be taken? Well, uh, we remain quite positive on the market uh, from the next 12 month perspective. I, I think in the extreme short term, it's very difficult to say whether we'll see a 3-4% move up or down. But I think, uh, you know, come Diwali market, will start looking at FY18 earnings. Our own sense is that uh, FY17, FY18 earnings, you know, should be of the order of 15% uh, plus minus a few percentage points. And that should lead to a significant, uh, you know, amount of uh, growth uptick as compared to what we have seen in the last three years. So we remain, uh, you know, quite positive on selective uh, uh, long-term stories which we believe earnings growth is going to be strong okay that's an important statement from algeria oil minister that the opec could start production in november by one percent more than the amount agreed uh, uh, so uh, that's a uh, brent crude now the it's amount okay. agreed in algiers was only a verbal agreement it was supposed to be firmed up in november so it looks like the november meeting will have a bigger number yeah. and i, I think the, there the, are no competition commissions internationally yeah i, <laughs> I think the bigger takeaway is some kind of uh, coming back of pricing power to opec because that really was the big story last year uh, now after a long time you've seen that you know this this particular meeting has had a uh, you know impact on the oil prices so moving back to 52 from 40 it's a decent rally that you have seen oh, in oil prices uh, actually it was a voluntarily giving up of leadership as well with saudi hmm. arabia hoping that it will be able to kill the uh, uh, shale oil producers by simply dropping prices uh, to an unsustainable level for the new prospectors we will have to still wait and see at what point shale becomes a cap for uh, oil producers that still exists and it's believed that you know shale requires only one week notice to restart their closed uh, rigs we'll have to wait and see when that uh, works at the moment of course uh, uh, opex able to talk up prices let us see whether they will walk the talk oh yes uh, varun you have uh, you know hpcl as one of your top ideas in fact uh, uh, I think uh, you are invested the maximum limit in HPCL in your funds, if I am not wrong. Uh, uh, do you maintain your bullish call on that stock? Well, we remain quite positive on uh, you know, oil marketing companies uh, without going into specific details about the portfolio. I would just say that our sense is that these companies will deliver, continue to deliver good earnings growth. Uh, uh, we have seen continuous rise in the consumption uh, and the demand for both petrol and diesel. The working capital situation for most of these companies has got a lot better as compared to what it was in the last three years. And uh, our sense is that uh, these companies will you know, uh, inch up to 18 to 20 percent kind of return on equity levels with a good 15 percent kind of a profit growth and a good dividend payout ratio. So we, uh, we see no reason why they should not do well uh, in the times to come. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lucian, uh, you know, I remember uh, about 10 or 12 days back, you had spoken about uh, Moil and uh, NMDC and, uh, you know, uh, that being a bit of an easy trade available on the table and that's played out. Uh, uh, what next? Uh, is there anything else uh, that's on your radar? Okay, Mr. Tulsian, I think uh, your, your audio is uh, not coming across, so, yeah. Yeah, no. If you first take a call on Moil, if you see today, I think the stock is up by about 11-12%. If you recall, the company raised the manganese ore prices by about maybe 15%. So what is happening that market expects that immediately market should respond, but it doesn't happen in this way. And if you take a call to yesterday, NMDC have raised the prices of the lump by about 23.5% and of fines by about 20.5%. But if you see people, you know, I've seen few experts or maybe the plate which has been shown shown on, on our channel that you know the prices have raised by 400 rupees per ton. In fact, it is not 400, it is the quantum 25%, 24% for the lump and 20% for the fines. And that is what going to get reflected in the, in, the, in the time to come in the NMDC price behavior also number one. Number two, if you see the buyback of NMDC and Moil, both have closed on 30th September. Maybe the physical shares will get tender till 5th or 6th since you have asked for the new trigger. And if you see the NMDC 
buyback was at 94 rupees moil buyback was at 248 now people will question the wisdom why any shareholder will tender those shares but those shares in my opinion if you really ask me are all tendered by the government of india okay. and they will mobilize closure to about 8000 crore from this two share buyback scheme so that is going to be very positive because the equity of nmdc which is at 396 crore will reduce by 20 percent to 316 crore and as i said this 25 percent and mind it that post monsoon you see a very good offtake in the mining activity as well as in the better offtake of iron ore so one should not restrict their view only for a day that since the yesterday nmdc have raised the prices of iron ore and the stock has not you know reacted much it has just gone mm. by three or four percent so wait for the outcome of the share buyback also which i am expected by monday that will get announced that the uh, the buyback has successfully happened that will be seen as an extra trigger for nmdc as well as moil going forward fair point uh, well uh, let me get a quick uh, word in on the uh, nifty and nifty bank from ashwini uh, if it closes where it is because it's only five minutes to uh, left for the markets to close ashwini uh, at 8712 and bank nifty at above 19400 it doesn't change your view that you will continue to buy november puts so it's clearly uh, you know retreated from 8800 we can't say the market is showing strength or it's moving higher mm. so uh, given that you know your risk reward is so favorable 8800 8820 that is your stop and downside you know could be anything 8500 8550 for starters mm. so that way i think uh, the risk reward is extremely favorable both on banking as well as on the nifty so maintain your short position now what event will take the market lower or increase the momentum that only time will tell mm. but uh, the overbought nature and everybody being long that sort of evidence is clearly uh, in the market okay, okay. well uh, Mitesh, uh, for positional trader what's your advice now See, on the indices i think you know we have started buying uh, some puts of 8700 and we are beyond the october expiry itself but I would want to see the Nifty break below 86.20. I think once that breakdown happens, that could lead to a quick 4-5% uh, kind of drop in the indices. So I think maybe below 8600 you'll be more aggressive. But for the time being, yes, you are taking some trades short bias, given the fact that a lot of intraday indicators today have entered the negative mode. Okay. Uh, well, uh, in all the mayhem, another sector, you know, there are always these sector-specific islands. Uh, today, paper as well has held out its own. The star paper with about a 4.5% uptick. Shishishai paper is slightly higher, uh, uh, and several West Coast, uh, uh, Shreyans, uh, JK paper, JK paper was actually done very well, 4.6. Uh, any of these stocks that you like, uh, Mehrabo? I mentioned earlier that uh, paper is one sector which I started liking. I think uh, the dynamics of the industry have changed a little bit. What has happened is the biggest player, Balarpur, uh, uh, that is what the industry bodies, uh, I keep on talking to them and the information I get is Balarpur's three units have closed. Okay. JK paper industry source states that it is making a strong bid for one of the plants mm. that plant will be in coating paper i personally like the sector and i like a company called ruchira paper okay. i think the best roe the cleanest balance sheet writing and printing paper increase the capacity uh, i'm expecting earnings to be around 12 rupees in the current year and 15 rupees in 2016-17 at 15 rupees even if i give it a valuation of just nine or ten times I see the stock at around 135 to 150 rupees, which should come in the next one or two quarters. Present price 90, 95, 96, whatever. I think a return of more than 50% coming in two quarters. So I think Ruchira paper would be the best bet, followed maybe by JK paper. Okay, but well, just about four minutes left for markets to close. So let's me squeeze in one last question. Uh, uh, Mr. Tulsian, uh, at what point will Ashok Leland become a buy again? It's now at 80. Anuj, I think it qualifies by now, you know, may, may, maybe because stock having co corrected quite a lot is just seen consolidating. So I think I will advise a buying, but only with a, with not, not from a trading point of view, maybe with a view of about three or four months. And Anuj, just a point here, continuing with um, uh, what Mehrabun has said on the paper stocks. So I like one stock with, that is quantum paper. If you see, they have posted 15 rupees EPS for the first quarter. I am expecting them to post an EPS of 50 rupees for FY17, which was at 24 for FY16. And the, if you see promoter sake of 70%, top line of closure to 500 crore, market cap is 250 crore, they are doing exceedingly well. So maybe I'll advise our, our viewers, you know, keep a, keep an eye because we have recommended this to our member, you know, about a month back and stock is still looks quite good at 275 because as I said that EPS of 50 rupees is expected for FI 17. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, thanks, Mr. Tulsan. Uh, Varun, uh, how are you all approaching the NBFC space, uh, the big stars of 2016? More to go or are you all booking out of some of them? No, we believe that housing finance story has a long way to go. We are seeing uh, an almost a 20% credit growth you know, as far as housing finance is concerned. Almost 25,000 crores of housing loans are getting added to the system every month. Uh, so I think as the penetration of housing in, uh, increases, as you know, housing prices have been stable for the last few years, that is definitely helping the affordability part. So those players you know, which are uh, having a good credit rating, which are able to raise money at cheap rates, which have good uh, you know, due diligence frameworks, which can manage risk well these are players which will continue to do well so some of the private sector housing finance companies i know some housing finance companies with psu parentage which have triple a rating we believe they will continue to do well in the next few years okay just about two minutes left for markets to close so let's just do a quick recap uh, interesting day the market nearly broke down and uh, again in last 15 or 20 minutes miraculously again came back and defended that 8700 mark yet again so closing above that I think the averaging should also be above 8700 and the bank nifty should be somewhere around 19,380, 390 on uh, averaging basis two themes which played out today uh, some of the outperforming stocks fell today so auto names for example so the banking stocks uh, lost ground and oil and gas clearly is a theme which is still working on the banking names, what was interesting was that the morning losers actually recovered, Access and Yes Bank. Towards then, there were other losers like ICICI, State Bank of India and Bank of Baroda, which actually ended uh, uh, on the lower side, while Yes and Access almost ended in the green. That was really interest interesting. Apart from that, uh, Auto and Cement names corrected. Ultratech Cement was down 2%, Mahindra, Tata Motors, DVR, Z Entertainment. So, some profit-taking angle clearly attached to today's trade. Infosys is making a move back towards its 52-week lows. Uh, 1026, 1009 is the 52-week low on that one. Two days left, two working days left for Infosys earnings. So, that's an interesting stock to watch out for. On the way up, oil and gas led by Reliance up 2%. BPCL up 3.5% and Gale up 3.5% as well. Grassum went X split today, so that played out 2.5% higher on that stock. And Hindalco and Bharti Infratel were other major gainers in today's trade. But the interesting day for the mid caps as well because through the day there was underperformance, though towards the end there was some minor pullback even for the mid cap index. Well, absolutely. At one point in time, I mean, actually, it was a more volatile day for the index. They started off with half a percent in terms of gains, saw a deep plunge, uh, almost one percent in losses, but they are not finishing with uh, that much in terms of losses. Though I wonder who would have made money mm. in such a, a you know a seesawing market. Uh, well, just to reiterate. Uh, the not so mid cap boys who have done well, HPCL among them, uh, Gale, uh, uh, a prominent performer. Uh, and uh, then you had even some uh, companies like, you know, Sri Chakra continuing to remain in the green, although the other tyre stocks uh, started to see a lot of profit taking. Uh, actually, it's perhaps easier to read the list of profit take uh, uh, the uh, stocks in which you saw profit taking. GSPL saw about 4% knocked off. Uh, MCX, which has been only going one way, saw a decent amount of profit taking coming in 3% knocked off. Uh, IDFC 3% taken off. Kasuram 25 taken off. Bank of India, in fact, a large number of the public sector banks saw about uh, you know one and a half to two percent. Uh, Canada, Union, Bank of India, all of them saw profit taking. Uh, DLF, PFC, REC, uh, the entire lot saw a decent amount of profit taking. And there was some, of course, more severe profit taking coming in the small cap space, if you please. You know, the India, well, not small cap, but mm -hmm. the high beta. Mm -hmm. India Bulls Realty, for instance, lost six percent. Monetist Path, which perhaps had very little business to go up. Uh, uh, and is now getting to become a penny stock is now down about six percent uh, copran loss maybe justifiably another five percent uh, mukta arts again which was running uh, balaji telly the entire media space many of them saw decent amount of uh, profit taking the distillery stocks uh, like pioneer distilleries global spirits also about four percent you know Typically, the stocks where people would have ridden mm -hmm. after seeing the rally saw a decent amount of profit taking. And I think the mid cap now is ending a little lower than we thought it would. It has ended about 0.6 in the last uh, uh, 15 minute averaging. Bank Nifty as well ending almost 0.75% lower below the 19,400 mark. Oh, yes. So, uh, quite an interesting day that we had. A lot of stocks doing well. Uh, you know, stocks like Moil and a couple of oil and gas stocks. Uh, but overall, the trend was slightly uh, downward. Uh, Marbon, uh, Jubilant Foodworks, uh, ha has it made a bottom? Because uh, uh, on the day we had the exit of Ajay Call, that day's low is being held. Not a personal uh, 
level I have never liked the stock. Okay. At least not uh, in terms of valuation. I liked it when the IPO came. Uh, but disclosure over here that our institutional desk has a coverage on the stock which is a positive view. Mm -hmm. But I personally have never liked it. This is my personal view. And I am not enthused at all at buying this stock at the present price or even if you give it to me at 10% cheaper. You don't like pizzas or you don't like jubilant? Both. Jubilant as a stock, I would say that. And I, as far as pizzas go, maybe that is one more reason. It's distinctly possible the taste of people. Okay. There could be something new which can come our way. Because what we were eating seven years ago and what we are eating today is okay. different. And what we could eat two years later could be something different. Okay, okay. Fine. Uh, food for thought there. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Tulsan, you want, uh, uh, can you give us a view on uh, Jubilant Food? You think it has bottomed out? We just got news that Yum Brands has seen some of its, you know, KFCs and all, seen a distinct pickup in demand and in sales, uh, you think that uh, uh, Jubilant Food is good at this price? See, Lata, marketing strategies will keep coming in, you know, introduction of the new varieties or maybe Navratri sales when the people are fasting and all that. But, you know, if you recall, probably maybe Anuj will be able to endorse you or I think not comparing yeah. on that day. I said on when the Ajay call left that this should be taken as a positive because I have been calling it as a non-performing stock. If you see for last four years, if a CEO is not able to deliver, you have grown your stores from 600 to 1000. But what has been happening to the bottom line? Bottom line has been continued continuously showing a declining trend. Promoters have reduced their stake from 65% to 45, 46, 48%. So on the day of that news, when it came in on, the, on that day only, I've said that the stock has bottomed out, but that was just a technical or maybe a technical call that if you want to play for a short term, you may take that uh, as, as, as a trading call or maybe a short term or near term investor. But from a long term point of view, still I will call it as an avoid. But on that day only, I've said that the stock seemed to have bottomed out. Yes, Mr. Sir, I do remember that you had pointed out that uh, maybe it was uh, a wrong call from market considering that uh, under as you call the, the stock had actually not done too well. So uh, we should have actually reacted the other way around. Orient Some Cement, the news, news has come now but to acquire the Belize uh, JP Cement unit. Uh, the amount is also mentioned uh, in that press release, I think. Yeah, uh, we, I still have to get to that press release, but uh, uh, I think the 34% stake at 1-4, yeah. The EV of uh, uh, 1450. So we have to see uh, exactly how much they're paying. Mr. Sen, uh, uh, Orient Cement, uh, you have a, uh, a view on that? Uh, they're acquiring 74% stake in this uh, Bilai JP Cement from JP Associates. See, Anuj, maybe this is in a, seen a positive view because if you take 100%, it works out EV of 2000 crore. But I am not keeping a positive stance on the Orient Cement as such because if you see CK Birla Group, I have never liked the performance you know having shown by the, by by them in their other companies. So maybe because of that reason, in spite of I am quite uh, uh, bullish on the cement stocks as such. But per se, I won't be you know I have not honestly analyzed this news. Mm. The, 74% for 1450 crore, that translates into 2000 crore for 100%. But I am not too, 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 too enthused with uh, taking a positive call on Orient Cement. Yeah, yeah. there is the, the press release is uh, out on the exchanges and Anisha has read it through. Anisha, what have you picked up? Well, yes, Lata. So we understand Orin Cement is going to buy the 74% stake that Jai Prakash Associates hold in the uh, in the Bilai Cement unit. The rest of it is sold by a sale. Now, uh, as far as the capacity is concerned, it's 2.1 million ton per annum, and it's oper it operates a clinkerization unit as well in Madhya Pradesh and a grinding unit in Chhattisgarh. Now, they have been earlier in discussions to sell this particular unit to Sri Cement as well, but the talks fell through. Now, as far as the valuation is concerned, the number that we are hearing, the enterprise value, is 14. 150 crores and that works out around $110 per ton as far as the valuation of the cement business is concerned and that is in line with what we have been hearing in the seven deals that have gone by. It is slightly on the lower side but nonetheless it's not a bad deal. Looking at the fact that JP Associates has been struggling with the huge amount of debt they have. Remember JP Group as a whole has around 60,000 crore worth of debt. They have been not able to service the debt on debentures etc. The interest uh, payment as well. So this would help them to pay down debt a bit. Now 1500 crores does not change a lot of things for the company because the debt is huge to the tune of around 58,000 crores if you take it off for just Jai Prakash Associates but nonetheless a positive step coming in. Okay, uh, thanks a lot uh, for that uh, Anisha. We'll leave you to pour through the press release and the uh, amount of disclosures given uh, and uh, come back with uh, more update on what the impact would be on Orient Cement and on Jai Prakash Associates. Uh, let's thank uh, Mr. Tulsian, Varun, uh, uh, Ashwini, Mitesh and Mehraboon for taking us through the last hour of trade. 
and here we present now the closing bell money control question of the day. The question was uh, the day's uh, tepid response to the spectrum auction so far, did the government get its pricing wrong? Well, the reply. Well, 70 percent of the respondents agree while 30 percent disagree. We have uh, Udayam underscore effort saying the government will end up killing the, the golden goose if it prices spectrum so high. The tepid response clearly uh, 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 is uh, reflecting the mispricing. Okay, and Umesh says probably the telecom companies are trying to force the government to price spectrum reasonably. Uh, and one more, Raghav underscore Rama says most likely this could set the stage for higher mobile bills in future. Once there is consolidation and fewer players are in the race, tariffs will be hiked. Okay, that's it uh, on, in terms of markets. Uh, we take a short break and uh, Manisha Gupta will come and carry over the baton and give you a lot of strategies in the currency and the commodity space.